another beautiful day in Cleveland. Gray clouds everywhere. I just woke up. Let's do this thing. Let's just get on in there. What's up guys, Joey Geither here with JG Multimedia and today we're going to be talking about how to upload your WordPress website using the Duplicator plugin. So the great thing about this Duplicator plugin is that you're able to upload a website to a hosting service and really have no downtime from uploading your new website to the hosting service and having your other website down. I don't think there's really any downtime. You just upload it and you know the old website's gone and then you clear your cache and refresh and it's up that's it it's great so that's what we're going to be talking about today hopefully that was clear enough yeah. so the first step to uploading your website using duplicator to a new hosting service is to of course download the plugin so once you have the plugin downloaded and it's installed activated obviously but then you're actually able to go to that plugin and create a new package and this new package you could name it whatever you want but basically what it is is Duplicator is creating a file of your entire website. There's going to be a zip file as well as an installer.php file. So click next and if it asks you if you want to continue with this build process, uh, just say yes, check off to it, and then start building your new package. Uh, so click build obviously and it's going to start building that file up and depending on how big your website is, uh, it might take a little bit of time. So once your website package is created, there's actually an option for a one-click download and I recommend doing this. It's going to download the zip file of your website as well as an installer.php file that goes hand in hand with this package that was created. Um, the important thing to remember here is one, not to rename your website zip file. Um, this is because the installer.php file inside the code has this specific name within it so if you rename the file it's gonna screw up the installer.php file and that being said this installer.php file goes specifically with this website zip file so if you want to re-export your website into another package you're gonna need another installer.php file this one will not work for the other one if that makes sense they always go hand in hand so you can't just download one installer.php file and it work for every time you export a zip file of your website. Every time you're going to need a new installer.php file. Unless you want to go in and change the code, which I don't recommend. But if you know what you're doing, go for it. But it's really no big deal to redownload an installer.php file. It's like so many kilobytes. It's not big at all. So, yeah. So once you have your installer.php and website zip file downloaded, you're going to want to head over to your hosting's cPanel and find where exactly you can upload your website in the file so that it gets hosted to the internet. <laughs> For me, it was the public underscore thing HTML folder, and in there I was able to find where the domain hosting is so once you find the folder where your website's being hosted from you're going to want to upload the zip file of your website as well as the installer.php file and you're going to want to make sure that it stays zipped just because depending on what kind of hosting you have and what kind of plan you have it might not allow you to upload that big of files you know you never know it might be megabytes might be gigabytes but either way a zip file is just more compressed so it's faster to upload and so once both of those files are uploaded to that folder you're going to want to then extract everything within that zip folder of your website and once you do that you're able to just to delete the old zipped folder and this just makes sure that when you do the duplicator plugin install that it's not reading any of the files in there and saying you're going to overwrite them it's just easier just to delete it get it out of the way so that option doesn't even come up but once you have everything uploaded and unpacked and the old file's gone, but make sure you keep the installer.php file. Don't delete that one. But once you have everything there, you're going to go to www.yourwebsite.whatever slash installer.php. So this is actually going to then start setting up the duplicator process of uploading everything from, you know, that package that you had into your hosting. So it's going to upload that website to your hosting, I guess. This is the easier way to say it. So once you head over to the slash whatever installer.php page, it's going to bring you up to the first duplicator step, 
of the installing process and it's going to be step one of four the deployment and you're just going to agree to all their terms of service and click next so step two is the installing of the database for your website it's going to ask you for the host the database a username and a password now the host usually is just local host all one word if it's something else um, you might want to talk to your hosting I guess I'm not entirely sure I've never had to do that but we're gonna be creating a database with a new user and a new password so to create this new database and this new user you're gonna to want to head over to your cPanel of your hosting and find the my SQL databases and once you get into there you're able to create a new database as well as a new user so obviously do those two things they're pretty easy to set up just type in what you want your new database to be called and give a username and password for a new SQL user. And then this is the important part. You're gonna wanna link that new database with that new user. And so you're gonna wanna give that new user all the privileges within that database. And once you give the user all the privileges to that database, you're actually then able to go back into step two of duplicator and then enter your database name as well as the username and password of the user linked to that database with all the privileges. So once you do that, you're going to want to test the database and if everything checks out, good, great, head on over to the next step. If it didn't work for you, I would recommend checking to make sure that everything's named correctly, that you gave the user all the privileges. And if that doesn't work, um, I don't know, ask me in the comments. I might be able to help out, see, or Google it because that's probably what I would do. Next, you're gonna head over to the next option. You click test database and next takes you to the next option. And this one's gonna be step three, which is update data, data, whatever you wanna call it. And the important part here is to go to the options tag in one of the options below. I shouldn't say options twice. Go to the options tab in one of the categories below. Click on that and enter a username and password for the admin login that you want for your WordPress website. So this is exactly as it, I just said, it's the login. So if you don't create this, you're going to have a hard time logging into your WordPress website. And if you miss this step, you're going to want to talk to your hosting provider. And it's happened to me before where they can help you out, you know, say what your username and password, what you want it to be, and they'll fix it for you. Um, so then you can log in. So don't miss this step. And so then once you do that, you click next, it's going to actually take you to the login where you can just retype in the username and password that you created. And you should be logged into the dashboard of your WordPress website. Ta-da, it's uploaded. You did it. Wow. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. You're able to go to the dashboard, see all your same plugins. Then you're able to clear your cache within your browser, refresh the page, and your new site should be there or you can go over to an incognito tab and type in your website there but it should be pretty much how you had it planned out before when you were i don't know self-hosting it or working on it somewhere else i guess i don't i don't know what you do but i usually self-host it so once i self-host it and it's done i upload it to an actual hosting service and so duplicator is the plugin i use i believe most of the time everything should be uploaded fine However, I've had a few cases where I had to go back into the editor and fix a few things, but nothing major. And usually if I go into edit page and then refresh, it'll just update it and then that page should be fine if there is a problem. Because I've had a few times where a page would be missing pictures and then I go into edit it and the pictures were there in the editor. So I just click update and then it refreshes the page and everything's fine. So if that happens, just refresh an editor and that should work for you. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, hopefully you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me down below. Uh, check out my website if you have any inquiries. Email me there. And, uh, you know, check out my social media, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Looking forward to Christmas. I have nothing special planned video-wise. Sorry. Uh, see you guys next week, maybe? It's a date? No? no. Bye.